you're out there, you're riding, you're having a good time and uh, taking in the, the outdoors. The fight isn't over. The fight is just beginning. channel. I can't see making it too far going this direction, but I'm going to try. I was just thinking about people's gauge of whether or not they're a pretty decent rider. And it's really all relative to how much you ride. Of course, the pros that do it for a living are going to be, you know, way above everybody else just because that's what they do they're they're clocking in and hitting it all day every day but if you're working five days a week and, and going every weekend and doing some pretty gnarly riding then you're probably a pretty good rider in my eyes anyways snow here this is hard this is hard to uh, stay upright in I don't know what made me think of that topic was uh, another youtuber who's a really good rider rides all the time and with a lot of pros and stuff, and he, he made a comment that he wasn't the best, and I'm like, he's, a, he's an excellent rider. Snow biking it up with no snow bike. <clears throat> I have a feeling the fun is about to end right here. I'm slowing down a little bit. has a lot of power but it really doesn't help that I have a bold back tire on it right now. This back tire is really torn up. I've had it for a long time. too steep right here not a, not enough momentum and it's a little bit too steep that was mostly the rider's fault right there I should have had more speed built up by the time I got to the steep spot but I think once I got over this hill starting down by that bush right there up to about that bush over there Looks like it levels out and it's rideable after that. But I am gaining elevation, so it's not gonna, the snow's not going anywhere, that's for sure. It's gonna get deeper and deeper. Just a little Sunday ride. I didn't wanna drive too far, so this is about where I figured I could come. 
I do not ride Clay Peak this time of year because it is it lives up to its name it's all clay and just gets jam-packed in your bike it takes forever to clean your bike after riding that stuff wet and it's not very fun when it's dry over there either so clay peaks a probably one of my least favorite places ever for one it's right next to the dump and I'm about to get political again, but Clay Peak is where we sent, or where the federal government sent everybody after they closed off Big Willow. Clay Peak is only like, um, just guesstimating, it's probably like one square mile right next to a dump. And that's where they, the federal government said to go if you like riding at Big Willow because they're shutting Big Willow down. Well, Big Willow was a huge area. So you can see the snow right there. Everything underneath is frozen, but there's probably about, well, it's hard to say how much snow there is because it varies. Over there, it's a lot deeper, but pretty deep. Any day on a bike is a good day. Just out of curiosity, what, what kind of tires do you think would have worked best in this environment? I'm curious to, to hear all the answers. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who say gigantic spikes. And they do sell those. They're not that practical, though, because you can't keep them on um, year-round. So I'm running studs on the front of this right now. The, the rear studs, after many, many rides, have worn down. But, um, yeah, a good aggressive tire. That's, that's what I opt for. Um, that's pretty much what I've opted for this year after running a lot of different tires. I experimented with the 505 Cheater in 2019 and the 505 Cheater kind of sucked for me, for my purposes. I, it would be good just if you're riding rock all the time, but whereas I ride a lot of soft pack and rock. I need it to to be workable pretty much everywhere. And I've landed on, landed on the IRC M5B on the rear, and I'm still using the Shinko fat tire on the front. I think that's a good combination. A lot of people don't like that front tire just because they say it... Um, it grabs a lot of ruts and sends you uh, flying over the top of them. Like if you're trying to climb up a rut, something like this. A lot of people say this tire tends to grab on the edges. But for me, the stability is worth that because uh, I like the stability of the wider tire and it hooks up really well on rock and stuff like that because of the added surface area. The snow definitely complicates things, but it's still workable as long as I don't slip and fall like I almost just did. Yeah, you can see as long as I don't catch on anything and I have good footing, I can lift this bike. This is a 454 stroke. And I'm not bragging about being super strong here. It's just super light. Super light. All right, I'm probably breathing like crazy in, into the mic now. So I'll start the bike. Yep, I'm definitely the only track up in here. I'm not even reaching down to the dirt. That's how deep the snow is over here. There's a couple spots where I am here. tricky right there. Pretty steep. Oof. So sometimes the snow kind of softens up the edges and it can make certain terrain a little bit easier to navigate actually just because it does soften up all the edges but you still have to 
adjust for elevation changes and off camber stuff just like you would normally definitely doesn't make things easier overall it just does help with some things but honestly I'd rather be riding this than slime depends on the, the type of mud but if it's slime then that's just no fun like I have more control right now in the snow than I would in that just muddy slimy crap But yeah, there's probably a lot of obstacles I'm hitting underneath this snow, but the snow really does take the edge off. I'm still using the same clutch, and I'll do a video, a detailed video on this clutch. I have been doing some adjustments to it, and I think I've got it to where I want it right now. Now I'm just gonna have to ride with it a few times. Oh, a razor. A razor made it up to right here before turning around and they really rooted things up. But anyways, uh, I will do a video on this clutch. Feels, feels like a pretty good setup. So, I'm still adjusting to the friction zone of this clutch, but it's a Midwest engineering clutch and it, it reduces your pull weight by 50%. I have no affiliation with the company, but when I find something interesting like this, I like to do a video on it just to kind of explain how to set it up and everything. I have heard people say that you have to pull them in all the way, which hasn't been true for me. So, come on. See, there's the problem. It changes the friction zone where you have to make some adjustment. I'm sure I could, if I spend enough time with this clutch, I could adjust it to be just right. I definitely can't have it killing the bike all the time and that's why I'm on the bike right now. I want to get into some stuff that's forcing me to use the clutch and ride out here, get used to the friction zone and because I've got a race coming up, I don't want it to totally suck. Yeah, it's definitely lighter though. This clutch is really working out well for me. I think I'll be a lot less fatigued. Anyways guys, I think I'm gonna head out, but I'll catch you on the next video. Peace. Thank you.